and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today we're going to check out some performance and see how accurate the 172 is compared to the pilot operating handbook. And we're going to do this in the Philippines just for a bit of a change. I haven't flown too much over here. We're at the Koyan, I think it is, airport. This is another airport that's going to come up very soon in another exciting, what I think is a really exciting video. Um, so hang around for that because it's something you've probably all wondered about if you could do it or not. So, but today what we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the 172 up and we're going to check it out at a number of different altitudes and see how it compares, how its ground speed as opposed to its airspeed compares and where is the best place to cruise in the 172. Now the pilot operating handbook says 8,000 feet is the ideal place but now look there are some variants as I know I have had a little fly around in this and there's some changes in this particular video from uh, some previous flights I did so now there's, there's going to change a little bit here and there uh, but uh, this is the scenery now this is zoom level 19 done with some ortho to give it uh, a little bit more of representation and I've been throwing all those buildings and trees that you see around uh, in just to give it a bit more of a realistic feel um, if you're interested in building your own airports and um, getting some nice scenery, please feel free to go back and have a look in the how-to sections. I've got a, a whole list of uh, videos back there for you, and you can learn how to do a lot of the building. The uh, the aircraft you see there on the left, I've put those in, but the, the basic terminal and this parking area on the left were already there, but uh, everything else you just see around it uh, certainly wasn't. So I've set the altimeter to uh, zero or Q and H, which is the airport altitude, just to give us a base reference, because we're going to go and we're going to come back here in the process. So we've got everything ready to go, and uh, let's get ourselves into the air. So we'll generally apply power, keep those dancing on the rudders just ever so lightly, and we'll keep this as straight as possible, and we will head off. I'm not weaving too much, doing pretty well. I think my uh, my feet work has got a little bit better since I did the um, tail wheel dragger videos just recently. They were a lot of fun. If you haven't watched those, pop back and have a look. Maybe I'll uh, put those up with all the flights uh, up in the top corner for you. So getting away, the ortho scenery looks really nice as you just get up off the ground a little bit and... Uh, we're going to head out to one of the near airports. You can see it just on the um, uh, GPS there. Uh, uh, RUY, I think it is. But we're going to head over that way anyway. Just so we've got somewhere to go. Just in case we want somewhere to land as well if we break something. It's always nice to know when you're not familiar with an area. So we're going to climb up. First thing we're going to do is check our 1,000 foot altitude speed. So. We're getting here, if you check on the, on the speed indicator, we've got 120 knots and then we had uh, 122. So we gained a whole two knots and that's all this. So you compare between the, the airspeed indicator and have a look at the GPS on the bottom left corner there and you'll see a ground speed. So it wasn't very much to achieve there, but you wouldn't expect too much. This is all... Um, all down to air density really. The air is going to get thinner as we go higher and the aircraft, providing it produces reasonably good power, will also um, go faster because there's less air resistance as well. So let's get climbing up towards our next step and here we are up at 5,000 feet heading comfortably across over to the airport and uh, have a look at the figures that we have here as we get closer. Uh, this one at 5,000 is 114 knots indicated as you can see on the speed airspeed indicator and uh, just make sure you check everything um, I've noticed a couple of times that my temperatures got a little bit high as well so you've got to be a bit careful and we're running this at uh, 2500 rpm and I'm trying to use the uh, the mixture to get us around about the that perfect mixture between too rich when it just runs rough and too lean where it burns out valves which we don't really want to do something I'm not too familiar with because the Jabiru has a temperature a temperature an altitude compensating carburetor so um, I've never had to worry about doing it but in this one you do so speed wise 
114 knots with 123 knots ground speed. So we've gained a little bit more there, haven't we? We've got six, seven, eight, nine knots um, difference between ground speed and uh, airspeed, indicated airspeed. So we'll keep going along. Our next step is going to be up at 8,000. So yeah. Hey, if you're uh, new here and you haven't been here before and you like what you see, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. We're uh, climbing steadily towards a uh, 1,000 um, subscribers. We're up in the uh, nearly the mid-850s at the moment, 840 or something like that. Um, so, yeah, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, having a really, really good time making these videos. Uh, so, let's get uh, navigating. We're checking our speed. So we don't want to be running flat out. Uh, we never really want to run the engine flat out because it's just not going to last. That few hundred RPM back just brings it back into a little bit more of a cruise and uh, we can just set that mixture and get that just about right. I'm thinking around about that where the needles are about that pointing at each other seems to be not a bad place, but that's not very scientific. It's just uh, a stab in the dark from, on my point. From my point, so here we go. Some beautiful scenery down there. The uh, the river down there below as we climb up to uh, we're heading 8,000 feet is our uh, next little spot that we're just about to arrive at as we climb up. And it doesn't take particularly long to get here. It's uh, it climbs really well this SP. So we'll get ourselves leveled out. Give ourselves a chance to just make sure the mixtures and the RPMs and everything are correct. Our uh, temperatures, the temperatures were getting a little bit high on the climb up. So I um, had to just move the mixture around a little bit to cool the cylinder heads off a little bit. They were getting a bit toasty. Now I did get caught out in this with the um, <laughs> uh, the autopilot because I engaged it but I couldn't work out how to get it off. Have a look on the, uh, on the button. So 105 knots and uh, 121 knots so we gained 15 knots at, at 8,000 feet which is pretty good so you're actually getting traveling across the ground 15 knots faster than you're indicated so pretty, that's uh, that's not bad performance in the previous flight I did this I'm sure my performance was uh, the best at this altitude but let's wait and see what it's like for the rest of the flying so as we head up to 10,000 feet now we're, we're getting 100 knots indicated and 118 knots ground speed. So we've actually... Well, we dropped back just... Oh no, we still gained a little bit at 10,000. Which I didn't get in the last flight. The, the, the sweet point in the last flight that I did, and I was having a bit of a look at this, again, it was actually the 10,000 feet. Uh, the 8,000 feet was the best. Which is what the PO8 says it is. But we're not far away. Keep climbing along, and we're going to head up to the, uh, the the maximum altitude or the service ceiling of the uh, the Cessna, and we're going to head up towards 100 and, uh, to 14,000 feet and see how that goes. So we're going to climb steadily up to there, and uh, we won't, I won't make you sit with me while we do that because it takes a little bit of time. It does struggle, and you've got to keep working on the mixture as you get to this higher altitude. So we're going to head up a little bit. You can see the mountains. It's really pretty here too. It must be really beautiful in real life. This is around uh, Jonathan's airport. Jonathan is the subject of our... Uh, well, probably the next video along in this sequence, depending on when you're looking. You can see we've got a little bit of uh, engine smoke. I would imagine that is. You can see a bit of uh, the part of new particle effects working really nicely there. Cruise along and get some altitude, and the clouds are looking magnificent. Still can't convince myself I need to buy a, uh, a weather package. I just can't see myself doing it. That looks really good now. So here we are at 14,000 feet, so 100 knots, 124 knots ground speed. So we're plus 24 knots on this flight. Now, what's the other thing wrong with this picture, guys? What's going on? Have a think, have a look at the colour. This is something you will run into in X-Plane if you are not careful. Yes, hypoxia. Because we're up at this altitude and there isn't any option for 
um, oxygen I believe um, if there is I don't know how to do it so here we are at 14,000 feet anything above 12,500 I think is the uh, is this the posted limit you can correct me in the comments if I've got that wrong I'm just doing that from memory um, but yeah you once you're up here you need to be on oxygen you can buy oxygen tanks and uh, just have the ones that go into your nose essentially like you would if you're in hospital um, I've seen a lot of people do that and gliders have them available as well when they go flying because sometimes they can get some huge altitudes so we need not to stay here very long but that's really surprising that is the best figures at least airspeed versus ground speed so we're only indicating about what's it 100 knots there or something and we're actually getting 124 or so across the ground so um, it's not bad so I'm wondering why there's a variation in it between this flight and the other flight that I did do. So we've headed back down, we've uh, come back and we're approaching the airport now and, and we've got our vision back as you can see. So something to remember, a few people have been caught out in airliners because they haven't set up airliners correctly and they've flown up to 20 and 30,000 feet and they can't understand why they keep crashing. Something for you to remember guys, just remember hypoxia is real, it will get you. You know, I think you can sit around about 10,000 feet. I used to live in the Middle East, so we used to be able to drive up to 10,000 feet, which is pretty amazing. And, uh, yeah, you can really feel it walking around. You get out of the car, and certainly the car didn't like driving up there very much. Um, but some fantastic views from there as well, down the uh, southern part of Saudi Arabia. But we're uh, coming back to our airport, so we're going to turn right and uh, go left downwind for runway 30 in a moment and uh, see if we can get ourselves back on the ground in one piece if you can do it without bouncing so you don't laugh at me again hope you guys are all having a really great week it's uh, it's a busy time for me I'm just about to head back to Australia um, here as it is here early in uh, 219 so if you happen to be in the northern suburbs of Adelaide you might see me around because I will that's where I will be and there's a few people from Adelaide that uh, that watch the channel so feel free to come and say hi if you recognize me I may even get uh, a couple of t-shirts and things done um, for the channel and uh, I'll certainly will I'll have them on and uh, if uh, maybe I'll, I'll put them up for sale if you think you would like them uh, at some stage down the road as well so we're gonna enter left downwind for runway 30 as you can see and uh, try and get a nice smooth landing on this Cessna. It was a really enjoyable flight and it's nice to fly somewhere a little different. Um, it's, uh, it's a nice, I've done a few little flights around in a couple of different parts of uh, the Philippines, but I haven't done much of it there. Um, I did build an airport there for uh, another guy who took me up on my offer, asked me if I would do one for him, he had an island. Um, and that is downloadable. Um, please remember all these airports that I make, if you ever want them or if you would like all of them, let me know. More than happy to send you a Dropbox link. You're welcome to download them. You will need to get a few um, libraries, guys, from just, but just from the org, nothing special. Um, there's a readme file which should cover it all. I'm pretty sure it covers it out, covers it well. And uh, this airport or... Um, any of the ones in Australia, I've done a fair few around uh, the United States, um, mainly over Florida way, if you happen to live in around the Florida way. I've updated some of Miami and stuff because it would only have the basic terminals. So now as airplanes and all the, F the FBOs and everything are all roughly in place there, you can go land at Signature if you want and uh, taxi in and have a feed and park your jet there. So we're getting a little bit of a descent. We're probably sitting a little bit low, sitting at around about the 60 knots. I should have a little bit more speed than that, so we'll get that up before we turn left. Need to be doing a bit of trim, and I'm porpoising around a little bit here. I'm just trying to get my altitude down. Um, if you, again, you know, the offer is out there, guys. If you have an airport that needs building that has nothing or only has a very little bit there and you need some help, let me know. I'm happy to do a video and show you how to do it and uh, you can go ahead and download it as well. Um, there's a new version of Ortho for XP out as well, guys, for doing your um, 
photo scenery. I haven't got hold of it yet. Um, but it apparently does some better work with the runway. So if they are not um, flat and they are undulating, um, it can now do it. So I don't think the 2.0 does, but the, the point three zero uh, does. So if you need me to do anything, uh, look on the org and you will find it in the signature for the gentleman who does it all. Just search for Ortho for XP. So we got a nice little approach coming in, bit of smoke coming out of the buildings. Just like a kid at an airport. Still do it, still stand at Barrett Field and watch them land on occasion. So we're coming in, got the nose up. Let's see if we bounce or not this time. Looking pretty nice, very gentle on the place. And there we go, no bounce. I reckon that's an 8 out of 10, what do you reckon? So we're back and we're safely down. So we have just to wrap up. At 1,000 feet, we had 100 knots indicated and 122 air ground speed. At 5,000, we had 114 knots indicated for 123 knots, which was plus 9. At 8,000, we had 105 indicated and 121 uh, indicated, so it was plus 15, which is it wasn't what I expected. It was a lot better than that. I'm sure it was 130 or something when I flew it previously. Uh, at 10,000 we had 100 knots and then 117 ground speed, plus 17 that is. And then at 14k we had 100 and 124. It was plus 24, so that was the best altitude overall. But uh, I think I might do it again and just see if I get different uh, results. Thank you for coming along, guys. Again, if you're, you've enjoyed the video and you haven't been here before, feel free to subscribe, hit that bell icon, come and visit letsflyvfr.com, sim toys, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you then. Bye.